Uh, thank you very much, uh, Stefan. And uh, Stefan said he would do a uh, brief introduction. I think that was pretty brief. Um, but I am delighted to be here with you all for our 13th annual School World Forum on Social Entrepreneurship. Uh, welcome, everybody. <laughs> Uh, every year I step onto this stage and it, 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 it's so humbling to see so many change makers, uh, the people who are making the biggest difference in the world in, in, in one place. And uh, I, I get to stand up here and look out over you all and think about all the great things you've been doing. Now, um, today we had such a special uh, opportunity to have Mary uh, open the proceedings. Uh, this is Mary's fourth time at the School World Forum, and uh, she's been such a great supporter, not just of the forum, but um, of human rights and the DRC and uh, the world in general, women's rights, and the list goes on and on and on. I'd just like to say a special thanks uh, to Mary. Um, so please, <laughs> a round of applause. <clears throat> Um, and uh, somebody who was unknown uh, to me until today, uh, Selena Leem, who came here and talked about uh, the threat to um, her home, the Marshall Islands. And it, it reminded me of a story. So um, uh, as some of you know, uh, I'm, I'm very good friends with Elon Musk. Uh, Elon and I go back uh, 20 plus years. And uh, amongst other things, Elon has a company called SpaceX, where he launches rockets, uh, many of which are launched from the Marshall Islands. And years ago, so 2001, 2002, uh, Elon and I had a conversation. My company, eBay, had just bought his company, PayPal, and we sat down and had a heart-to-heart. -heart and. Um, <laughs> you know, what, uh, what, what do you want to do next? And Elon said, well, I, I want to build rockets and colonize Mars. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, okay, well, I want to try to keep people around long enough <laughs> so that there'll be people to go on your rockets and colonize Mars. <laughs> I had dinner with uh, Elon about a week ago, and I said, Elon, can you speed it up? <laughs> but um, there are so many things to be grateful for. Um, first off, um, I'd like to welcome my family uh, who are here, um, my parents, Mort and Judy, uh, my sister, Heather, and her husband, Ken, and my wife, Stephanie. Uh, this is the first time all of the family have been here at once, so welcome. Thank you all for coming. Uh, our school center at Oxford is a wonderful place. Uh, so to, uh, to Stefan, uh, to Pamela Hardigan, who uh, if you don't know, you'll, you'll see in the next couple of days, um, and the entire team, uh, you've been such gracious hosts year after year. And finally, I'd like to thank the School Foundation team uh, who, um, you know, this, this may appear seamless, but they work so hard uh, day in, day out to make this uh, opportunity seem uh, smooth and uh, seamless. And I'd like to give a round of applause to the school foundation staff uh, for all they do. <laughs> And this year, I've asked them not to burn the hotel, not to light the volcano, et cetera, et cetera. I have the honor uh, this afternoon of introducing a great friend, Al Gore, uh, who many would agree is the hero of the environmental movement today. Uh, in one of life's uh, little ironies, uh, Al actually introduced me uh, at an event a couple of weeks ago at UCLA. Uh, 
And so I'm delighted to have the opportunity to reciprocate uh, tonight. And you already know a lot about Al from his work on climate change. So the challenge falls on me to um, share a few things you may not know uh, about him. Uh, I first got to know Al professionally uh, after I had just come back from a conference um, of Nobel scientists in 2005, and they declared that climate change was an issue, but wouldn't have to worry about it for at least another 30 years. Uh, then I went to LA and straight to um, Al, where he was doing his now famous slideshow, and it became painfully clear that the time to act was now. Uh, and that's why I had started my media company, Participant, uh, to leverage the power of media to get people involved in the biggest issues in the world. And right in front of us was this massive, massive issue. So after the slideshow, uh, a small group of Hollywood producers and I met with Al. Our idea, uh, turn the slideshow into a movie and reach more people more urgently. You know, there is a drought in California, so one must, <laughs> one must stay hydrated. Um, uh, so, there we are, a little group of Hollywood producers trying to convince Al that his slideshow would make a movie, and he looked at us like we had two heads. Um, but Davis Guggenheim, who at the time uh, was running uh, the documentary program for Participant, uh, and who also directed um, the film, uh, he named me Malala, which will be uh, showing uh, tomorrow night, uh, actually here at um, Oxford. Uh, well, Davis on the spot agreed uh, to abandon his post at Participant and direct this film on, um, on climate change. I agreed to fund the film and to contribute all the proceeds uh, to environmental causes and Al agreed to do the same. So we had a team and a mission. We were going to make a movie based on a former politician's slideshow <laughs> on a subject few people knew or cared about and within a year changed the world. Piece of cake. <laughs> Well, we followed Al around the world, uh, capturing his exhausting pace uh, as he traveled city to city, continent to continent, bringing his slideshow and his message to more and more people. Um, and I have so many memories of that time. And uh, at one point, uh, we, we all together went to um, Park City, uh, where Al did a presentation uh, to a bunch of uh, mayors uh, about climate change. And because we had to get to Minnesota that night where I was doing another presentation, we had a, um, a private plane that was waiting for us and it was, uh, it was dusk and uh, the plane was parked in a farmer's field. And um, anyway, you know, light attracts um, mosquitoes and there's a lot of mosquitoes in farmer's fields. So we all pile onto the plane and it was like World War III going on. There are mosquitoes everywhere. And, um, and I say all these things because people don't realize how much Al went through in the process of <laughs> making this movie. And I remember in particular, we're slapping mosquitoes. I didn't even know Al all that well at that time, but I saw a mosquito on his upper leg and I slapped it <laughs> just without thinking. And he looked at me and I was like, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> Um, uh, but that brought us closer together. <laughs> um, one, of, one of our scheduled filming events uh, was a talk that Al was to give to a group of insurance adjusters uh, in a uh, U.S. city in the, in the Deep South. Uh, but we weren't able to make that shoot because a storm rolled in. Well, the city was New Orleans and the storm was Hurricane Katrina. So six months from the time we started our conversation, uh, we had a film and more importantly, we had an audience that all of a sudden was wondering what is going on with the climate. Uh, 
still, uh, we didn't know what to expect. So we went to Sundance, and I know we have many of our uh, Sundance partners uh, here in the audience uh, tonight. Um, and it was the first time we had seen that film with, with a group of others. And the Sundance folks, I hope you can attest that the screening was a, was a revelation. People were laughing and crying and applauding, and better still, at the right times. Uh, <laughs> and we knew uh, at that point, wow, we actually have something here. And the film went on to be uh, a, a global phenomenon. Um, you know the rest, um, two Academy Awards, international acclaim, uh, a 2007 Nobel Peace Prize uh, for Al. Um, a lesser known fact is that the day that Al was awarded the Nobel, uh, he was actually in the Skoll Foundation offices in Palo Alto uh, that day. So a, a sacred moment uh, shared amongst friends. Now, I've told the, uh, the, origin, the origin story of an inconvenient truth tonight um, on the dawn of the 10th anniversary, because a lot has happened in the last decade, uh, and so much of it is positive. We now have the technology and tools for change. We have um, uh, an army of people that have been trained uh, to understand the uh, implications, the science, the data, and for the first time, we have an historic international agreement in place. Thanks to Mary, thanks to Al, and thanks to many of you here. So. <laughs> um, but none, none, none of this came easy. And you know, the bottom line is at Al Gore, all along the way, had every reason to quit and didn't. I hope you won't either. The work you do is so important and it's difficult. But you know, Al was met with critics and skeptics, manipulators, and downright naysayers, but he didn't quit. Al fought against extremely uh, well-financed uh, opposition who didn't necessarily play fair, but he didn't quit. Al lived to see our film change hearts and minds, but not make a dent in policy. But he didn't quit. And any one of these forces uh, would have stopped anyone in their tracks. But Al was willing to risk everything, his reputation, his family, his prosperity, his safety, to be on the right side of history and protect our only home. So our job on climate change is by no means done, but I've never been more optimistic that not only will we survive, but we will thrive. And much of my optimism stems from knowing that Al Gore has not and will not quit. So please welcome Al Gore. <laughs> 